Um, yeah. Uh, uh, uh. <clears throat> so, hey, everybody. Hey. We've just been struck by lightning. Yeah. I'm still curled up in a ball. Spit in God's eye and he blinked. <laughs> this is Tapeworms, the podcast where we watch movies. Yes, it is. And yes, we do. This may actually wind up being the first episode of Tapeworms. What a way to start that. Yeah. That's sort of like right after the I do in a marriage, you have a fight right in front of everyone. What? Like like in, in a marriage ceremony, like they do the I do and then they start fighting right in front of everybody during the ceremony. And everyone's just kind of like... Eh awkward and standing around okay all right you have a therapist right chris <laughs> <laughs> so in celebration of the joyous holiday season yeah we watched the star wars holiday special <laughs> which would only have been improved if there was a santa pete in it <laughs> god damn it the walls are breaking well, um yeah. there was a, a multi-armed chef there was it's true Portrayed by star of the show, Harvey Corman. Yeah. 1978 Star Wars spinoff television variety show. Directed and written by... An asshole? An asshole. Uh, directors and writers that no one's probably heard of, but actually had pretty long careers in television in like the 70s, 80s, and 90s. I don't know what they were doing with this. <laughs> you know, okay, first of all, it was not as bad bad as i thought it was gonna be i i mean that in terms of like dread of like oh is it is it over yet i felt that way on multiple occasions yeah yeah by around like the the 40 minute mark for me it does start to like drag and right. drag and drag and to be clear the the film's an hour and 37 minutes it is and i've seen edits that don't have the television commercials cut out right that are much longer they're kind of more fun yeah just because it's kind of fun to watch the the era the commercials the, the ads from that era yeah but yeah if you watched this on tv then not only did you have to deal with its bullshit but you also had to watch it with occasional ads for like slacks and stuff sears and roebuck yep they would most certainly be calling them slacks mm-hmm, mm-hmm. yeah corduroys were popping all that so it, that, that's funny because like for me it felt like there was always something to engage with to like look at and go why is this here what is happening sure. or there's always something to make a joke at in a way it's weirdly effective because it was designed to be a holiday special right so it was designed to be something that was on while your family was together celebrating not necessarily just to be watched right Sure. You know, a variety show kind of thing. And each of the individual segments, uh, that varying in quality, but there was something about each of them that would make you just watch it for a second and say, what the fuck is happening right now? Yeah, like, I think that's the thing. Like, it, it definitely would, like, if you're trying to, like, put in some batteries into a remote control car or whatever, and the TV was on... There are definitely things happening on the screen <laughs> that could catch your eye. Right. But not to make you feel good. I think the thing that first made me feel bad was when I realized that, well, at first I thought it was a blonde-haired Wookiee, and then I was corrected and uh, learned that that was not a blonde-haired Wookiee. It was an aging Wookiee. It was like a senior Wookiee mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. missing yep. teeth and, and gray hair. It was just... Yeah. Something about that. That's Chewbacca's father. The only way I can describe that Wookiee's face, all right? <clears throat> Take an old man's testicle, carve a mouth into it, and then give it gums. Okay. And now, like, have a conversation with it. Okay. It kind of reminded me of one of the witches from the Dark Crystal a little bit. There was oh, something yeah. kind of I got of a very, like, scary jack-o'-lantern circa November 5th kind of vibe. Yeah, dried apple doll. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and we've seen Chewbacca in countless movies. And, and Chris made this movie. I don't want to not credit that. And other Wookiees, I'm sure, have shown up on screen. And it's been fine. 
There should be a baseball film called Wookiee of the Year. Yeah. But this film starred Chewbacca's family. His father, Itchy, his son, Lumpy, and his wife, Mala. Great names, by the way. Sure. And all three of them are just bad to look at. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) These costumes, there's just something about their mouths and their eyes and the way that they move that I just didn't like. No. And I feel like I wasn't alone in that feeling. They were a good step and a half down from like the movie grade Chewbacca costume. I would say several because again, like Chewbacca in the movies, I don't know about you guys, but it's like, oh look, Chewbacca, I want to pet him. It's like having your uncanny valley response triggered by an alien. Sure. But yeah, <laughs> absolutely. They're almost there, but they're not quite right. Right. I uncanny valleyed on a fucking Muppet, man. Yeah. And based on the research that I have done, it was in the wake of the first, you know, chronological Star Wars movie. And George Lucas was approached like, hey, everybody's doing variety shows. We should do one for Star Wars. And he just let them do it without really consulting or being consulted about the form that that should take and the aftermath which we just experienced all 90 to 100 minutes of 98 minutes was so upsetting that george lucas basically ordered it destroyed yeah and that's why none of you know what it is which is saying something that george lucas yeah pumped the brakes think about that for a minute really think about that it also, I mean, this film was directly responsible for George Lucas becoming the brand fucking fascist that mm. he became, you know? Right. He either did it himself or he hired somebody that he trusted to do it. Right. And everything had to go through fucking Skywalker Ranch. Mm-hmm. I'm sure it wasn't profitable. <laughs> Well, made for TV, right? So. Yeah. So, yeah, I guess the definition of profit's a little different. Sure. It, it had to have sponsors. When did this air again? Uh, nineteen November of 1978. 78, November. yeah. November 17th, <coughs> 1978, I believe. Yeah. So, it, it was 14 years until I was born. Sure. I need a time machine to go back so that I can interview people that watched it. And say, like, now how do you feel about this? Because, like, I look at it and all that's happening, and part of me goes, like, is this just a time gap thing? Like, am, am I out of place here? <laughs> Does this make sense to someone? And what was their holiday they were celebrating? It was Life Day Life, or something Life like Day. That? Yeah. Yeah. I think, yeah, that we were just trying to warm people's spirits and get them ready for Thanksgiving and then yeah. move them into the rest of the holiday season. But uh, right. I'd say fail. And and no, Chris, I don't feel I, I feel like just most people reacted pretty negatively. It, well, it's not it's not just I can't talk with my mouth. <laughs> Better than I talking do feel with your like, anus. you know, the the fact that it's of the 70s definitely had a strong effect on the aesthetic of it. But I also don't feel like it was well liked even when it was new. <laughs> Nathan Rabin of the AV Club wrote, I'm not convinced the special wasn't ultimately written and directed by a sentient bag of cocaine. Yeah, yeah, I think we came to a pretty similar conclusion. Yeah. Let's talk about the segments. Okay. Have we said that all we want to say about... It? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I I think so. (laughs) Sure. I do have a quote from the producer. I don't have any context for this interview. It's just a quote that pops up when you research the holiday special that says the determination was that it was a bit too late then to do much about it. We couldn't pull the show. And I guess there was a determination. Well, it wasn't really that bad compared to other Christmas specials. (laughs) So so what the hell? And also apparently they made prototypes for merchandise, which they then shelved because (laughs) they realized what they had. (laughs) Shit on a shingle. Yep. Boil in a bag. Uh, do we want me to just go through the, the plot and talk about it like we did with, uh, with cats? I think I need you to because I am lost. Yeah, our story begins aboard the Millennium Falcon. 
really one of like the only point in the movie that you kind of feel like you're watching Star Wars content is like the first three or four minutes of a mix of like stock footage and Harrison Ford and Peter Mayhew in the Chewbacca costume clearly working for a paycheck. Harrison Ford often has I'm kind of just doing this for the paycheck energy when he acts. Mm-hmm. And and that was very much the mode he was in. Fighting the Empire, trying to deliver Chewbacca to his family for their Life Day celebration. Life Day being something akin to Christmas for Wookiees. Only not, because it's weird AF. We then cut to the planet Kashyyyk. Where someone has made a very bad painting of a Kashyyyk home. <laughs> yeah, I, I think that might have been original star wars concept art <laughs> and the young wookie had a, a sense of adventure yeah mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. with that little stroll down that um banister that on yeah. the other edge would just cause absolute death yeah it's, yeah. A, it's, it's far to the it's a long drop yeah of it's a big tree house yeah you know uh a species that lives in one mile tall trees you think that the urge to walk on railings would be a not selected for survival trait right like even if they're confident in their reflexes like you wouldn't think that because that's that's one fall and it's, you're done just you're gone. not yeah. alive anymore and i i don't necessarily like knowing chewbacca through the uh, the star wars series i don't know him for his agility <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> and i do want to point out Because the thing that I struggle with is this show was just put on ABC for just audiences of Americans to watch with no warning. (laughs) The second thing you see after a space battle and some like introduction are people in furry animal costumes (laughs) speaking in an unsubtitled language of moaning, growling, and kind of garbage disposal sounds. Now, I want to point out that m- cartoons and media have done this before. Like, the the opening of Up. Not a single line. But we watch this couple, and you, you catch every story bit. You guys know what I'm, what I'm talking about? The opening of Up? I yeah, know what you mean. Yeah. Not one word, but... Yeah, we there's have nothing. Faces. In this, you have people in masks yeah. who cannot emote. Making noises that you cannot understand. <laughs> yeah. And trying to convey intent through body yeah. language that is hindered by clumsily made suits. <laughs> right. It's honestly just brilliant, absurdist filmmaking. <laughs> it does seem like something that like a student filmmaker would do. As yeah, a, a Kaufman. Yeah, I could see it being a Kaufman bit. But but just like as a, a short film, just to be weird for the sake of it. I mean, I used to say that I wanted to make a movie that was about first contact between two alien species mm-hmm. that took place entirely in their languages with no subtitles. Sure. So, yeah, it's uh, I respect this. I respect the existence of this. Right. <laughs> in a really weird way. Yeah. And these Wookiees are kind of just doing domestic stuff. They're just hanging out. A little cooking. Little... Yeah. There's a bowl of what's apparently called a Wookiee Ookie. has a Wikipedia entry. And because there's no subtitles, because there's nothing, the only way I can phrase this is Stinky just decides to watch Cirque du Soleil. But real quick, real quick, actually, before we go on that journey, because I'm using the, the Wikipedia article to give me kind of a plot synopsis to go off of (laughs) and there's a link for wookie ookie first off i'm like that's interesting so i clicked it it has the most upsetting drawing i've ever seen in my life (laughs) hang on on, i gotta see oh no i'm gonna have to put it in the thumbnail (laughs) make it the backdrop of the entire episode (laughs) Because I hate it the most. <laughs> He's he, these are my Wookie Wookies, precious. Yeah, it's a very golem esque Wookie. <laughs> I, I assume it's Lumpy, just holding a bowl of these Wookie Wookie cookies. I love Star Wars naming conventions because, like, the only parallel to this in real life is like Humus. 
like human humus, like wookie ookie, like what? I mean, pastries often have whimsical kind of names, like like nutty buddies. And... Yes, but they're not called humey humes. That's valid. Wookie on the cookie. <sighs> but yeah, that's the worst. Don't or do I guess go to the wookie ookie entry in Wikipedia because holy shit. Because you won't be able to unsee it. Yeah. I'm going to have to put it in the thumbnail. Hopefully Lucasfilm doesn't sue me. <laughs> Wouldn't they sue the Wikipedia? I don't know. So Cirque du Soleil happened. Yeah, Cirque du Soleil. Just people in tight costumes doing a weird circus act. That are supposed to be little holograms. Yeah. It's surreal. It's a little bit upsetting. And it goes on for a lot longer than you would hope for. It's a lot like life in that way. I'm sure. It has this weird, like, wango wow, wango wow synth motif that runs through it that is the soundtrack to going mad. And speaking of the soundtrack, I actually, uh, well, I hated it, but I noticed that there were quite a few composers involved in addition to the band. Um, what was it, Jefferson Starship? I think it was Jefferson, yeah. Yeah, Jefferson yeah. Starship. So, but yeah, there's, I, I'm seeing this list here. There's John Williams, Ian Frazier, and then Ken and Mitzi Welch. All right. All composers given credit to this. Well, John Williams only mm-hmm. because they used his original Star Wars. Yeah, John Williams was the Star Trek. Sure. Compo- Star, Star Wars composer. Whoa. Wrote the theme. Whoa. Yeah, I know I'm going to get beaten up by nerds. <laughs> no. <laughs> so, yeah, that happens for a little while. We watch this weird circus performance many things happen for some reason many (laughs) things really the whole special is just things occurring on a screen and very little justification is given it's it's really just watch it's it's this weird voyeuristic experience of watching people watch television (laughs) yeah it's very lynchian in that way (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> um cut to uh, um god I, I yeah there's so little connective thread i forget which parts come when well that's the point when we learn that the family is concerned because chewbacca is late no no no, no. before that we go huh? to what's his face's store where he sells things no no that's after they call luke skywalker before we go to the guy's yeah. store Oh, right, right. Yeah, yeah. The family is concerned because Chewbacca is tardy for Life Day because they're, you know, they got in the space battle with the Empire. (laughs) So they call a very heavily made up, very poorly lit Mark Just incredibly glam Luke Skywalker. Yeah, yeah. And his face also triggered that uncanny valley (laughs) feel. Well, because, again... Mala is talking to him through a TV screen. Right. A TV screen that that is being captured by a camera. So Mm -hmm. Luke Skywalker is staring straight into your soul and you are connecting with him and it doesn't feel right because it doesn't look like it looks like an imitation Luke. Sure. Yeah. Speaking of uh, camera angles, the cinematography in this was very fucked because most of the scenes were very like just head on. You know, framed for television and like just as bland as you could possibly be there. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, I don't know how else to describe it. Right. And Luke Skywalker and R2-D2 are in a garage. Getting really high. Yeah, maybe. Maybe it was just a space bong they were working on. <laughs> Fixing something, some kind of engine. They have a lot of whimsical hijinks where they're doused in what I assume would be boiling hot steam (laughs) and just getting chemical burns that would explain some things but it's played for laughs and isn't it funny there's smoke coming out of a thing and that's not what luke wants that's the joke r2 smokes coming out of the tube (laughs) that was pretty on brand for that era luke skywalker though oh sure he was kind of just a little putz (laughs) a little slapsticky yeah you know what's honestly amazing to me? What's what? that? The fact that Star Wars has become a global institution and a major cornerstone of American and worldwide culture. And there's like one and a half good movies. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I like the sequel trilogy more than a lot of people do. I think each one of them is individually a great film. But they don't work as a trilogy. Yeah, they just don't work together. I don't disagree. I enjoyed the Han Solo spinoff. Yeah, I like Solo too. Yeah. So after speaking to Luke, then uh, we, we find out that Luke don't know shit. Yeah. And uh, then she contacts uh, Son Don. Yeah. Who has a shop where he sells cubes and... Cubes and cylinders. Yeah. Yeah. Um, he just sells shapes. <laughs> plastic things here yeah this is a clear acrylic would you like it filled with weird creatures <laughs> also real quick a lot of the special is people talking to wookies and yeah. shot reverse shot yeah and there is something deeply disturbing about like going from looking at a human face to cutting to the wookie faces there's something about that direct contrast yeah because these wookies were so awful mm -hmm. so we go, we go to a store that sells things San Don, played by Art Carney, who was apparently a well-known actor in his day. I'm unfamiliar with his he work. He was in The Honeymooners. Okay, sure. I have seen The Honeymooners, but it's been decades. Yeah, he was like the neighbor, Jackie Gleason's neighbor. Oh, mm -hmm. sure. And he's hassled by an Imperial guy. Imperial mustache dad. Imperial mustache dad. I'm unsure of this person's position in the Imperial military. But he does use his position to commit petty thievery from shop owners. By stealing a cube. Yeah. Apparently it's some kind of grooming apparatus. Oh, no, right. It has a toothbrush harmonic. It's a yeah, harmonic yeah. toothbrush. And we spend a lot of time letting Art Carney describe the functions of this grooming device. <laughs> which I guess was comedy? No, wait, I know what it was. Or it wasn't? It was the brush that David talks about. The one brush he used for everything. That's why he needed it. Well, that makes sense. Yeah, I think that was. Like, he described it being a, a multi-function grooming apparatus. Yeah, it's just the one brush he used for everything. Yeah. That uh, Imperial Technician is going to save so much time. It's true. Yep. And water. So that happens. Yeah. Uh, we're quickly taken to some overdubbed footage from the original Star Wars film. In which an Imperial officer informs Darth Vader that the Empire is looking for rebels on the planet Kashyyyk, which is the premise of the special to the extent that it has one. And Darth Vader says to do a house-to-house -house search to find the, the rebels, whatever. But they spend the entire time at Chewbacca's house. Yep, yep, yep. We're then taken to Mala watching an English-language cooking show. Cooking Panther. Bantha. Was it Bantha? It was Bantha, yeah. Okay, I was. that makes more sense. Yeah, a sure. mild yeah. amount of more sense. Where, and, and David, you recognize that actor as someone? Oh, uh, that was Harvey Corbin. Okay. He was uh, on the Carol Burnett show. And, okay, uh, sure. Also on uh, Archie Bunker, I think. Okay. Yeah, he was well known in the 70s. Sure. In drag, I guess. Mm-hmm. And a weird alien costume. With forearms. With forearms that pop out kind of one at a time. Yeah, it's kind of a gag. One comes out. Yeah, and like then... an arm appears to like do a cooking task. And then later a fourth one pops out. And yeah, I mean. Can we make it a rule that unless we say, and it didn't look that bad, that everything that we describe you have to assume it looks off in a disturbing way and just on some level horrifying <laughs> like... <laughs> but yeah there's an extended sequence with what i assume to have been actual slabs of raw meat i don't feel like they had prop meat to do this bit with <laughs> no it was probably real meat yeah yeah where the actor on the show with forearms and weird makeup also blackface i it just was. It was a little blackfacey, yeah, now that you point it out. Just kind of play with this chunk of meat for a while. <laughs> and sing a song. And then say, cooking can be fun. As if people don't enjoy cooking when they do. Yeah. And Mala gets frustrated because she can't keep up with the four-armed alien chef. Gets mad and turns the show off. And just sets the pot of raw meat off camera somewhere, <laughs> never to be seen again. The audience doesn't know if she cooks it 
or what happens to it after it's it's done. That was the scene. So whatever you got out of that was <laughs> what you were supposed to get out of it. Depression. I, I need you to, to send in your letters letting us know individually what you got out of each scene. <laughs> I have to know. Yeah. We briefly go back to a mix of old Star Wars footage and fresh Harrison Ford phoning it in and some space battle stuff. Yeah, lots of lasers. Yeah. Don't forget the cartoon. We're not there we're yet. Not, the cartoon's we're not, not yet. until like the second no, half. No, but don't forget it, you know? You know, don't forget the cartoon. We won't. We okay. Won't. It's okay. It's impossible okay. to forget that cartoon. <laughs> <laughs> we're taken back to the Wookiee family fucking around, growling and, and <laughs> snorting at each other. Uh, but we know what they were talking about, though, right? You kind of got the gist of it. I suppose. <laughs> You do, though, actually, which is kind of cool. Yeah, yeah. But then the shopkeeper shows up and gives the dad porn. Yeah, yeah. The, and then Art Carney shopkeeper shows up and tells the family, like, oh, this Empire thing is happening. Right, because he's, you know, part of the rebels. Yeah, yeah. Apparently he's he's a rebel as well. And gives the family presents, the most significant of which <laughs> is a porno box <laughs> that he gives to the grandpa Wookiee. And he... He does this kind of, that's hot stuff, Grandpa. Like, he's clearly implying that it's sexual. Like, I'm, I'm not wrong in, in that, right? No, like, that no, was clearly no, that what was... was textually happening. Yeah. Basically, the shopkeeper says, like, oh, you got to try this. It's, uh, well, it's a little, uh, you know, wow. Yeah. You like porno? <laughs> yeah, it's exactly what, like, a skeevy guy trying to get you to sleep with one of his ladies, like, would say. Sure. Th- all trying to not get caught by the cops. Right. And Grandpa Wookie puts on a VR helmet. In public. This doesn't happen yeah, in yeah. private. Yeah, just in the middle of his living room with his family and Art Carney. Apparently that device in universe is called a mind evaporator. <laughs> Do what you want with that. And Oh, so they have the Star Wars holiday special in universe. Interesting. Nice. <laughs> and Grandpa Wookie watches what we're told pretty clearly is Wookie pornography. All the while furiously masticating yeah he's doing a lot of mouth movements and it's creepy what he's doing with his face and we're we're treated to a human woman singing a song in like a swirly kind of psychedelic environment oh yeah crystals yeah i like the environment because i just like crystals sure and you liked not having to look at Wookiees for a little while. It was like Storm from the X-Men inside a kaleidoscope. <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> well said, JD. <laughs> she puts on a lot of sexual energy. Yeah. And also says things like, we're here now. You and me alone. And just like stuff like that. And it's I like you and I know you like me. Like shit like that. It's. As sanitized as smut can be. She sings for a bit. And it goes on for, again, too long. Yeah. The sodium in your meal isn't the only thing getting your blood pressure up for the holiday. (laughs) (laughs) Then that stops. Then that ends. And people have been watching Grandpa masticate in public. Yeah. uh, We call Carrie Fisher and C-3PO and basically have a repeat of the... We don't know where Han Solo is, conversation. Not just a Carrie Fisher, but a passive-aggressive Leia. Yeah. (laughs) Which is way more entertaining than it sounds on paper. (laughs) Right, and it's in a different room, and there's not, like, engine smoke. But it's functionally the same conversation we just had with Skywalker. (laughs) We just needed to get Carrie Fisher in there for a minute. And And also C-3PO. Yeah. We visit Han Solo and Chewbacca on the Millennium Falcon for a minute. There is also another teased hand job. Yeah, there's some kind of apparatus in the Millennium Falcon that I only got attention <laughs> called to in the Star Wars Holiday Special. I don't think it exists in the films. <laughs> but it's That's... positioned directly between Chewbacca's legs. Yeah, it's right at crotch level with Chewbacca, and Han Solo just keeps grabbing it. <laughs> a lot of sexual tension in this holiday special for the yeah, family yeah it's also like out of range of the lighting inside sure. the millennium falcon so when he reaches down you you know that he's reaching down between chewbacca's thighs into the shadows into the shadows. 
It just maybe, raises a lot of questions for me. That's maybe all. he right, grabs yeah. a lever. Maybe he grabs some monkey penis. That's the excitement. And you know that Chewbacca has an enormous penis. We don't actually know that. We don't know how. Like by I what? I feel like by we would method. see it if he did. Well, I mean, it might just be an engorged in fur. I don't know, but it, it just seems like it would be there because. Well, I mean, he's, like he's... species on on Kashyyyk may not have evolved penises. They could have cloacas. I mean, that's unlikely. <laughs> it is. They're too mammal to be having cloacas. Yeah, I mean, Chris, they, look they, up some Chewbacca fan fiction. They and do likely the have a penis bone, though. Sure. Yeah. Like almost certainly, they have a penis bone. So. <laughs> It probably just hides out in a little sheath most of the time. Oh, sure. Yeah. Right. It contracts. Yeah. It's like dog dick. Or right. Horse red dick. Rocket. Or, yeah. You just yeah, get a, a big chewy red rocket popping right out of I there. I don't like this conversation. Well, it's let's this, move uh, on. This is a bolt caster. <laughs> yep. But yeah, we go back to the Wookiees. The Empire bursts in and just starts kind of being fashy. They're like searching room to room for the rebels. Big, big Nazi vibes. Oh, for sure. Very uncomfortable. Okay. This is called Dirty Knees by King of Sin. Okay. It's on the episode of Seven, The Force Awakens. Head down, ass up. That's the way Chewie likes to fuck. (laughs) Thanks for that. And finished. (laughs) Very (sighs) nice. Yeah, it's going to fit into the episode nicely. Yeah, yeah. And various hijinks occur while the stormtroopers search this house for political dissidents. I feel like there's some tonal wobbliness there between what we're being told is happening on the screen and how the audience is meant to feel about it. Hmm. Maybe might just be me. How do you feel about it? Uh but yeah, what we're told is happening is a functionally a Gestapo raid on this family. But there are jokes, and I'm confused by that. <laughs> Maybe I'm just overthinking. <laughs> it's the funny, funny fascism. Yeah, I mean, admittedly, yeah. Hogan's Heroes exists, so like, right. I don't know. I don't know. It had more um, adjacency to Spaceballs, in my opinion. Oh, sure. Definitely some of that. Yeah, I mean, they weren't really buffooning them specifically, but uh, it, it was very strange. Very strange. It was a little the, weird. The, um, what's the Dark Forces called again? Whatever they're... Uh... The Empire? The Empire, <laughs> thank you. The Empire commander heading the raid, he, he just had like a gigantic penis shaped helmet on and then yeah. there's his mustache it was just like almost comical it reminded me of i know that it came out before space balls but there's just something about it that oh, made sure. me think that maybe that there was something there like maybe mel brooks saw this comedy special or i, I mean but one of the ways the family attempts to distract the imperial stormtroopers is with a music box which is different from the box that Uncle Grandpa watches the Wookiee porno on <laughs> and the machine that they're using to call Luke Skywalker and Princess Leia and the machine that they watch the cooking show on. These are all different devices. And the machine that Lumpy used to uh, play a game, a.k.a. Uh, watch a cartoon about the, the sure. Rebel Alliance. To be fair, in general... Circa 1978, mm-hmm. that wouldn't be all that unlikely. Like you, oh, you that's would have true. had to have a different device for each of those things. Right. Yeah, I kind of forgot about that. And I feel like appliances were popping off at that time. Like, but yeah, we get to watch a live performance by the band Jefferson Starship. I believe they were in mm-hmm. 1978. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Playing just pretty standard 70s rock. That guitar player slayed, though. Yeah, he was going hard. I thought was going to lead to something. No. Like, I thought it was going to lead to the Rebels launching an attack or something, but it didn't. No. Yeah, like, there was even a moment where the camera, like, we left the 
concert for a minute. Right. And we showed Lumpy standing behind one of the Imperials watching it. Oh, like, oh, he's going to hit him in the back of the head and it's going to be like a fun, but no. I could even imagine a spinoff documentary, like something that turned into uh, something else like Spinal Tap. But we did come up with a much better concept for a holiday special than, than this. That being an up and coming band. Played by Jefferson Starship. Yep. Going around the, the Star Wars universe, getting gigs and, and making it from one planet to the next. I think that could be fun. Time travel, baby. I would play in an all barred Star Wars campaign. That, yeah, could be super. Ray's fun. fingers fidgeted and she avoided eye contact. She had no Stop. idea how to Stop. ask what she wanted to ask every other time he had been done as a transaction. The idea of actually asking someone, especially a friend, I'm was gonna completely need you to foreign to <laughs> just, just gonna need you to stop. Fired. <laughs> Joe, you, you told me to, Joe. Yeah, I didn't mean it, though. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, we watched Jefferson Starship rock out for, again, entirely too long. It was about, a, what, seven minutes It on? felt like it, yeah. With a maybe a corn dog, maybe a dildo. We don't know. Yeah, because they were playing just their regular, you know, rock and roll instruments. But they made them science fiction by just, like, going back over the film with, like, a light effect. And giving one of them a, a corn dog to sing into. And, and yeah, it just turned the <laughs> microphone into a weird corn dog slash dildo made of light. There was an evolution to that image. It started off as possibly the silhouette of a penis. <laughs> <laughs> it was pretty phallic, And yeah. then it evolved into, like, now it looks like a lightsaber, sort of. And then it turned into, oh, that's a cosmic corn dog. Right. Or, like, a nuclear corn dog. Nuclear and then corn it, dog. And then it was became clearly a microphone, and yeah. it's still in a different just, type just of an shape. Envelope this of, this yeah, goes to show you how interested we were in the performances that we were <laughs> <laughs> but once that guitar player started ripping, oh I yeah, was he was like, going. I was hard. into it. Yeah, he was he, like he did, pelvic thrusting and gyrating. Was a good solo. Yeah, yeah. And and yeah, like I said that, and it was disparaging to the acts. But this was the one act I liked the most. It's a low bar. Yeah, but like I, I was actually like, oh, this is music. I'm listening to a band playing music. It did feel like a high a, a high point. You know, sure. up until that point, that was the high point. Apparently that song was released as a single backed with hyperspace. And that stayed single, trust me. <laughs> I don't think it charted, but the B-side was called hyperspace. So then that recording ends. Yeah. And then the, the technician gets up and yeah. continues. Well, before that, Art Carney just gets bored and goes, I guess I can't help with this. And just <laughs> leaves the, the show for a while. Yep. <laughs> They only had so much Art Carney budget, maybe. Yeah. Is that when the cartoon happened? Yeah, that's when Lumpy gets bored and goes to a different machine to watch a uh, a cartoon of just like a kind of a short Star Warsy adventure. Yeah. Within the universe of Star Wars. Right. Actually, after. After the Rebels became a thing and the Death Star was destroyed, I suppose there could have actually been a cartoon. <laughs> I could see that, them. yeah. Being like rebel propaganda media. Yeah, I could absolutely see that being a thing. And Lumpy was on ready, though, to keep what he was watching from the, the right. Empire soldiers. He was yeah. very like... So it had to have been like banned propaganda. This wasn't like in his secret room or his, his safe space. This was in the living room. So, so we start in the living room and the, the SS says... Search for any rebel content. Like he says that specifically. Right. And what does Lumpy do? Go straight for the rebel content. Mm -hmm. They go upstairs very slowly. Maybe yeah. maybe that's how they knew, because like you can't go down those stairs quickly. So when they know they're coming down, they shut everything off. Um I'm not gonna summarize the cartoon. It's out there. You can watch it. It it's the high point. It probably is the best thing in the whole program. First canonical appearance of Boba Fett, which I think is cool. Though a very different sort of character of Boba Fett. Yeah, for sure. Also, the only part of the Star Wars holiday special that was officially released. Apparently, it was a hidden feature on one of the DVD releases of the trilogy. It was like a secret bonus feature. And it was released onto Disney Plus when... 
they started making noise about the uh, Boba Fett television show. Yeah, cool animation style. It did, yeah. yeah. It reminded me of heavy metal a little bit. Yeah, or Eon Flux. I sure. Thought, uh, gave me some Eon Flux vibes. Uh, a little bit Ralph Bakshi, a little bit uh, Mobius. Oh, yeah. It's just very 70s, like the artistic style of animation. Mm-hmm. Sure. A little juddery. Oh, yeah. A little adventure happens, and then that ends. And yep. the SS come back down. And we go on as if nothing had changed. Yeah, Lumpy gets excited about the cartoon and goes, ah, and makes a noise. And the Imperials are like, what the fuck are you doing? And he flips a switch real quick. I'm, like, I'm just playing a game. Fuck off. It's a game where one, two, three, four comes up. <laughs> yeah, it's like a broke. It's like a Sudoku that's not working correctly. <laughs> <laughs> the Empire Guard or whatever, whoever that was, his reaction, you know, just being like, so dismissive of the the counting to four game yeah he was like oh your 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 mind is too primitive of course you're just playing the simple game and just dismissed it and if he would have just prodded a little bit more deeply everything (laughs) right and then the imperials start like ransacking the house they tear up a bunch of lumpy's toys it's a bad time they dump his lincoln logs all over the floor Crushes Commodore 64. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then Lumpy opens his present from Art Carney, which is some kind of communications gadget. He puts on the ins- the video instruction manual, which is presented by what I guess is a robot <laughs> that keeps know. winding down. Or like, you know, in the 90s when someone would, I don't know, go off with their skateboard and do a jump and they would rewind, fast forward, rewind, fast forward, rewind, fast forward, and then play. Yeah. That also happens. Sure. And it's a it's a very good, like, physical routine by the actor. Like, what he's doing is kind of neat. Yeah. And I mean, it was disturbing. It was very creepy. Deeply. Just, just disturbing. <laughs> He keeps like winding down like a like a toy with low batteries where it starts to like the pitch of it starts to go low. If you ever watch like that disturbing bizarro content on Adult Swim at 3 a.m. Oh, yeah. It gets to an to an uneasy place where it's like at any point I'm going to see something horrifying or like Mm -hmm. like this simple concept is going to degenerate. Yeah, I I was horror. I've been uh I think programmed by things like uh, too many cooks or actual footage of a bear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so at any moment, I just expected it to go into just bizarro horror land. Mm -hmm. I'm glad you referenced the footage of an actual bear because that's what sprang to my mind, but I couldn't remember the name. Right. Mm. All of Wham City is amazing to me. I love all of their work. Yeah. That might be fun to do for this, just some of their shorts. It'd be interesting. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, my yeah like, they got stuff to say. Yeah. But, like, that's that's an interesting point, too. Like, this holiday special was ostensibly, I mean, yes, it was it was a cocaine bender put on celluloid. Mm-hmm. That's, that's what it was. Right. But they meant it earnestly. Oh, yeah. I think it's interesting that, uh, you know, you and I and, and most of us here have seen these kind of absurdist short things and we've almost been trained now that this can't <laughs> be seen and just dismissed. Mm-hmm. It just, I, I felt a lingering sense of dread through the whole thing. And that's exactly what it was. I just kept waiting for the shoe to drop in it to just get right. That at some point it's going to drop the bit and go completely off the rails. Right. Yeah. It definitely did have that energy, yeah. <laughs> and then that ends. And then that ends. We get, that, we get bored of that. I love how everything is just like, this starts, and then it ends. And then it ends. It's just, the show gets bored of that bit, and then we move on. Um, It never pays off. Like, I assumed that Lumpy was building some kind of communication device or transmitter. To, to help, help Chewbacca get back home? Yeah, to, like, move the plot forward. <laughs> no, he does, though. Actually, oh, does he? Yeah. Did I miss it? That device is what he uses to create the uh, troopers oh, that's come right, that's right. home or whatever yeah, yeah, yeah. message. Sure, sure. I forgot about that. Yeah. But not immediately. That happens quite a while later. And at the time, it's just like, all right, we're done with that. Let's move on to the next thing. Where just apropos of nothing, a video comes on 
described as life in Tatooine, which is apparently mandatory viewing for Imperial personnel. And it's B. Arthur tending bar in the Mos Eisley Cantina, surrounded by all of the alien costumes in the Mos Eisley Cantina, inhabited by actors that don't know how to act in a costume. <laughs> so they're just there. They're just costumes standing around. It's fine. I want everyone who gives a damn to look at the costumes in this lighting and look at how they use lighting in New Hope mm. to cover up. The yeah, flaws yeah, that's of another these. fatal flaw is that they the whole room is very brightly lit. Just everything's illuminated. Yeah. It was TV, TV lighting. Oh, yeah. B Arthur is pretty aggressively sexually harassed by an alien with a divot in his head who is also played by Harvey Corbin. Oh, sure. And so was the robot guy, by the way. Huh. And I don't want to brush over that. Because in this family film, for the holidays, we have bad touch. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like, he, he goes behind the bar and, like, grabs B. Arthur. It's And there's a point where mm -hmm. he smells her hair. Yeah, yeah. And then he starts talking about how she will figure out that she does love him. Like, she just yeah. doesn't know it Which yet. Which is the kind of shit you see in a manifesto. <laughs> Did that just play better in the 70s? <laughs> I'm guessing so. Yeah, like it was back then comedy, you know, oh, this guy won't take no for an answer. Ha 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 ha. Sure. I'm trying to think of bits where they've done that in a family friendly way. I guess maybe. Uh, I do feel like that's a trope. Yeah. Yeah. Pepe like, Le Pew. Yeah. Or I guess a slight variant would be Sally from the Date Van Dyke show, where she's always trying to find a boyfriend. So, like, you you know that, you know, she's got a lot of, quote, guys, unquote. That's it. Sure. Like, that's where it ends. Right. But that uncomfort, but that discomfort is interrupted <laughs> by the Empire announcing that they're instituting a curfew and everybody has to go home because of Star Wars. It's the Rebels, I guess. The patrons refuse to leave until the Arthur... Which is how Arthur... bars work. <laughs> right. Because that's how... Yeah. And, you know, it's particularly the most wretched hive of scum and villainy. Sure. The patrons all refuse to leave until B. Arthur gives them free drinks and then sings a song. <laughs> Again, how a bar works. How... Yeah. <laughs> all right, we're getting free drinks and entertainment. Everybody leave. That's... <laughs> <laughs> I do wonder if B. Arthur did more singing in her career than I was aware of, because I did like her voice. I looked up uh, a few uh, albums, but they were comedy albums. Okay. Uh, I don't believe she ever put out any sure. um, musical. Was that still back in during a time where, like, to get into showbiz, you had to sing, dance, be funny, be be a good actor? Like, you had to do all. Yeah, all you had the, to be a jack thing. of all trades, especially in that era. You know, everybody leaves except the sexually aggressive volcano head guy it's kind of implied that maybe they get together in the end well, well don't forget this romance this deep great romance for the ages was sparked by b arthur saying to him thanks for coming in come by next time yeah but she said that to all of her patrons yeah. which and and she does he witnesses this realizes his folly that when she said that to him originally, that was not a declaration of love. Right. It was just customer Which conversation. And then he just like him. cuts his face on the yeah. bar and for the whole bit is just face down on the bar having He's a embarrassed. moment. He's yeah. embarrassed. Shot down by B. Arthur. Yeah. I'd, <laughs> I'd, I'd be, be embarrassed. embarrassed too. No, I wouldn't. She's got better people to see than me. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. That bit ends. Oh, god damn it. Yeah. Then Lumpy uses the device that he built that I forgot served a purpose to trick the Imperials into leaving the house. Crack fucking military, man, let me tell you. Yep. One stays. Yeah. And yeah, one stays behind. Han Solo so shows up. And because, again, this is a family comedy for yep. the holidays, they mm -hmm. don't actually kill him with violence. They trick him to running through... Like, like fucking Looney Tunes style, a yeah. railing and falling to his implied death. Right. With a Wilhelm scream. Mm -hmm. One of the better performances of the movie. 
Um, <laughs> Han Solo, Chewbacca, and the Chewbacca family are reunited. Family Baca. <laughs> Where Han Solo says to them, you're like family to me. Yeah. I don't even care to go into it at this point. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I mean, I could see, like, you know, that's his best friend. Like, I could kind of see, especially since, you know, Han Solo doesn't really have family of his own. Like, I could see there being that emotional connection, but I don't know. It doesn't matter. How much does Han actually like Chewie outside of just trusting him? I mean, he's good friends. Yeah, it seems to be pretty good friends with him. Yeah, they're like brothers, yeah. Then Harrison Ford collects his either paycheck or cocaine or both. And leaves the movie. The Chewbacca family is given some like cr- glowing crystal orbs. Yeah, sure. Yep. And then they finally put on some clothes. Yeah, and and yeah, there's a transition, probably an ad break that we didn't see. And the next thing that happens is all of these Wookies are in just the void. They're just in the darkness with fog machine all around them. They walk into the light. Yeah. They're kind of in, in the kaleidoscope. But just, yeah. just like mentioned earlier, like, something like it. No, wait, don't walk into the light. Like, that's what they did. That's what it was. Yeah. yeah. They, they march into Mordor. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's weird. For the Life Day celebration, you know? They had to go and put on their their religious garments. Apparently, that's how Life Day is celebrated. Also, R2-D2 and C-3PO are there, and they lament about the fact that they do not have souls. Yeah, that does happen. Moving on. (laughs) (laughs) Hey, kids, ever wanted to watch a robot have an existential crisis? (laughs) Yeah, because it almost feels like, and I can see this because Anthony Daniels has kind of a nice Shakespearean voice, that he was kind of going to give like a, a benediction. Like he was going to bless this moment. But then he laments the fact that he doesn't have a soul. <laughs> Fuck, man. I don't know. I wish we had feelings so that we could share this moment with you. But we are right. stuck inside of our metal frames. My yearning, body is a prison. Yearning. They definitely had feelings because, I mean, uh, C-3PO is always terrified. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of like a Wizard of Oz scenario where it's like, oh, you had the heart all along. You sure. the brains. <laughs> Yeah. Carrie Fisher then sings. Yeah, Mark Hamill and and Harrison Ford and Carrie Fisher all come out. I don't know how they got to the... The Life Day celebration, yeah. But they're there. They showed up. Yeah. They're all just hanging out on Yggdrasil, man. (laughs) (laughs) (sighs) They got a whiff of that ether rag and it sent him right in. (laughs) Yeah. They woke up in there. They didn't actually walk in they just woke up in there sure took the rainbow bridge if you know what i'm saying (laughs) (laughs) they show up we celebrate a day of peace a day of harmony carrie fisher sings a song which was worth the price of admission right there oh sure come on yeah and then chewbacca stares in directly into the camera as if twice pleading with us to free him from this yeah Stop buying Star Wars stuff so I can get out of this suit. I'm glued inside. I have to be surgically removed. And then something else happened, and then you see that same expression, and that's how the film ends. Yeah. Um, Not before he... we get some very jarring footage to original Star Wars. Yeah, just content. stuff. Apparently it's Chewbacca's memories of his adventures. Yeah, he's reflecting. I kind of wish they had put more thought into that and used literally any other footage to like, maybe Chewbacca's family or literally anything to imply that Chewbacca had an internal life before, you know, he showed up in, in Star Wars, but whatever. <laughs> he's a soldier. They broke him down, you know? Yeah. He, he... God damn it. I just assumed that he was telling the gathered family there about his story mm, that makes sense but david that, why didn't why didn't you do the, the metal joke well i mean again i i think it's pretty shitty that like <laughs> give this man a medal why did it take 40 fucking years for chewy to get right. a medal um i actually do know why he wasn't given a medal oh yeah that's right that's right and in in the original thing like it's disrespectful to give wookies medal like they don't well like no it. i mean that's not why that's the retroactive continuity reason why but that's not actually why why is it carrie fisher is so much shorter than peter mayhew 
and the costume is so inflexible that there was no good re- way to to shoot it because he couldn't bend down and she couldn't right. get up there right exactly and so they just didn't why not just give like in the scene have a little thing that leia steps onto to a i think they have that for like metal ceremony i don't know they just didn't do it that way are you sure it wasn't something like a like a respect thing though like why he didn't get a medal is it because i know in like china and taiwan burping is like a high form of flattery after a meal i don't know how those two things are connected what what he's saying is that in the wookie culture giving them a medal may be a sign of defamation or something i mean that might be why they culturally retroactively explained it right but practically speaking it didn't happen because when they were making the movie, they couldn't make it look good on camera. Exactly, yeah. Gotcha. Wait, movie? Star Wars isn't real? No. That would have been cool if there was like a little step ladder that Carrie Fisher could have like... <laughs> sure. No, right. no, no, no. A, a royal crane like comes down. <laughs> Just a Fucking drone. Cherry picker. Fucking <laughs> drone comes over and grabs it. Gave him. Chewie a little throne to sit in something very regal looking that would, yeah they could have how about something it's just yeah. on his knees because <laughs> yeah i know he can sit but he couldn't kneel mm. so that's that's you know the why of so yeah they could have given him some kind of chair i don't know yeah whatever the last thing we see before our minds finally unravel is uh the chewbacca family i guess bowing their heads in prayer before eating their roast beast Praying to God to forgive them for their existing. <laughs> that was who hash, Joe. Oh. And that's the plot then, of the Star Wars holiday special. And then it stops playing. <laughs> and and then we all take a minute. And think about what we've done to the world, what, what we've been seeing. <laughs> what we've done to each other and what we're doing to you now yeah. as listeners. Again, I did not have the dread that you guys did. It felt like there were so many things to grab onto and just, like, what and why. Right. I mean, this definitely didn't top Cats for me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cats was better? No, Cats was worse. Cats was weirder. Cats was more upsetting than this. Yes. Yeah, for sure. I found the Wookiees to be more jellical than the cats. <laughs> <laughs> jellical cats and pollicle dogs. Fuck, do we... I did, did... Wow, I've lost all ability to operate my human mouth. <laughs> do we have any any parting thoughts? Or have, no. Have we dissected the Star Wars holiday special? Um, Is there any history about it? I mean, I went into most, like, any of it that seems salient. Yeah, I mean, really the only specifically interesting thing about it historically is that it was almost immediately suppressed uh, yeah it was never actually put out officially uh kind of got out because people recorded it and made their home recordings available and now it's on the internet and still somehow lambasted by critics yeah 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 um i mean it's it's bad it is it's not good but it's the perfect sort of thing to put on in the background of a party for a bunch of star wars nerds yeah you know it's it's great party fair i think and so again i say it's it's successfully does what it set out to do or while your cult drinks its kool-aid that too (laughs) yeah i mean whatever sort of party you're into yeah or, or even like if you want to acknowledge the winter holidays but you hate the whole energy of them. And you need a non-denominational outlet. Yeah. The Star Wars holiday special is a nice middle ground there, I feel like. Agreed. Would we recommend that people watch the Star Wars holiday special? On weed. Sure. Yeah. I mean, don't Star watch Wars it holiday sober. Special on weed. Don't watch it sober. That's really Sure. Don't do that to yourself. Get your intoxicant of choice and a few close friends and have yeah horrifying time yeah maybe don't do that to your close friends though (laughs) (laughs) like say you'd been on some dates with someone and they seem to be like really like latching on and you're not feeling their vibe maybe (laughs) put that on have them over put that on and just pretend like you're into it for an hour and 37 (laughs) minutes and then watch them fly out the front door an interesting bit of trivia apparently carrie fisher asked for a copy 
And later in life claimed that she uses it to uh, clear parties. <laughs> wow. Okay. That's, uh, that makes sense. Also, apparently the Wookiee costumes were torture and the actors had to take them off every hour because they were suffering oxygen deprivation. Oh, Jesus Christ. And they were as furry on the inside as they were on the outside and it created major skin irritations. I just made that up. They didn't need to be. That was a choice oh. they made. <laughs> <laughs> they wanted the actors to feel like that. And we all know Wookiees are fuzzy on the inside, too. Yeah. Did you say they wanted the actors to feel like us? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I didn't, but that's funnier than what I said, so we'll go with it. Oh. And rest assured, J.D., I would never watch this movie with people I actually liked. <laughs> yeah, but that's because you don't like anyone. <laughs> Touche. Oh, and also the reason why the scene at the Life Day scene at the end looks like it looks is because they literally ran out of money <laughs> and basically had to use like candles and construction paper. That is beautiful. And the extras didn't have actual Wookiee costumes. They just had That's Chewbacca why they had the masks. robes. Yeah, they had Chewbacca masks and robes. That is beautiful. Yep. That adds up. Yeah. All right. I think I'm going to wrap us up. If you enjoyed this, I don't know why you would, but. But on the offshoot that you But did. if you did, you can go to wegiveyoubrainworms.com and you can find our Patreon. You can get into our Discord. You can learn about all of our other things that we do. We did a, a live commentary. We recorded our reactions as we were watching this. I'm thinking $5 and up patrons will get that commentary. Yeah. And you can watch the Star Wars Holiday Special with us. <laughs> and technology wonderful. Yeah. Whatever you do or don't celebrate in the, the winter holiday season, I hope you enjoy it. I'm yeah. oh, sorry. Stay warm, y'all. Yeah. Thanks for listening. Yeah. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.